Hi, my name is Agnes and I ruptured my Achilles tendon on June 8, 2016. And if you are here because you are either suspecting or you ruptured your Achilles tendon, I'm sorry. I know it's not a fun injury and the rehabilitation time is um, quite long and intensive. So, But it is what it is. Uh, I know that during my first week I uh, watched a lot of uh, videos and I read a lot of blogs to point me to information I need to research. So I thought I'd record my recovery journey if I can help at least one person that's already a success. Um, so I ruptured my Achilles tendon playing pickleball and I was not doing anything intensive when that happened but uh, I did feel a loud pop and I felt like something hit me in the back of my calf. It really felt like somebody hit me with a metal rod and I collapsed uh, on a court with pain. And when the pain got slightly better, I tried to get up with help of others and put some weight on my foot, but that wasn't possible. My foot was really like jello. It was not really hurting when I was putting weight on it, but it was not usable. It was just like jello. <laughs> So my husband drove me to emergency room where the doctor performed something called Thompson's test and that basically involves the doctor squeezing your calf when you're laying on your belly and observing your foot. If the foot does not move at all, that means that most probably you have a complete Achilles tendon rupture. If your foot moves just a little bit, you could uh, have partial rupture or this could be a um, different type of injury. In my case, it was a complete uh, Achilles tendon rupture. And the doctor placed my foot in half cast. It was molded to my foot and bandaged to my leg. And the medium in which they put your foot doesn't really matter. It could be a boot, it could be full cast, it could be half cast. The important part, however, is the angle of your toes. If you notice that toes are, I don't know, at about 20 degrees pointing down in this cast. And, um, this is called plantar flexion position, which means toes pointing down. And if you went to emergency room and they put your foot basically in a cast or a boot that's at 90 degrees and you suspect you could have ruptured your Achilles tendon, that's something you know to discuss with doctor as soon as possible uh, and make sure that uh, your foot is placed in a position with toes pointing down. The reason for it is for the ends of tendon to be as close um, to each other as possible so your treatment is starting immediately and you don't develop too much of uh, uh, scar tissue, connective tissue. Um, so um, I was given a order not to put any weight on that foot, uh, elevate it as much as possible and ice it and um, um, I was given a referral to orthopedic surgeon. We were able to make an appointment with uh, the surgeon six weeks from, I mean, six days from my injury. And uh, I thought that's a long time. So we made another appointment with someone two days uh, later. And uh, when we saw the doctor, the orthopedic surgeon, um, I was uh, definitely confirmed with a complete um, rupture of my Achilles tendon. My foot was put in a boot, I don't know if you can see it, but it's a, a removable boot um, which was slightly more comfortable than the cast and my toes were still in about 20-25 20, 20, degree plantar flexion. Um, I was um, basically given two options and explained their risks. Um, I could have done surgery or um, you know pursue non-operative treatment. I was told that with surgery that, you know, of course there are risks uh, of infection uh, and that's internal infection, you know, scar infection, potential nerve damage and, uh, you know, you go under anesthesia so there are risks with, associated with that as well. With the non-operative treatment I was told that the rupture rate is higher. And I was also told that many active people basically in the US are currently treated with surgical treatment. However, I was told whichever choice we make, you know, it's going to be successful both, you know, both ways the recovery is successful. We were told to go home, think about it for a couple of days and let them know what we choose. So we did so. Uh, we went home, started researching and initially I was thinking seriously. Surgery, I did not want to re-rupture again. I'm really active. so. 
I didn't want to think about it in the future constantly. But the more we were researching, the more um, we saw more evidence um, that the latest studies, and all within the last 10 years, uh, were proving that if Persian go goes with non-operative treatment and, and that's important, and um, follows the latest rehabilitation protocols, which include um, early uh, range of motion exercises and early weight bearing, the rapture rate um, for uh, non-operative non treatment with these protocols is almost the same uh, as uh, surgical uh, uh, treatment rapture rate. So suddenly the rupture rate, which is the only negative on no, of non-surgical treatment, you know, goes away. The fitness level and uh, calf uh, recovery are, were identical with either of the uh, treat, uh, treatment, surgical or non-surgical. So suddenly, you know, the light shone in my head. I'm like, why not avoid, you know, all the potential risks of surgery when, you know, latest studies with the latest protocols show that I could get the same results with the non-operative treatments. So with that information, you know, um, you know, with the information of all the medical studies and also watching uh, some vlogs and, you know, reading uh, blogs of active people that went through it, um, I decided to see a couple of more doctors the following week. One of them was a surgeon that just wanted to cut. He, you know, that was just his treatment, regardless of your case, he was, if you're young and healthy, uh, he was recommending surgery and he was not willing to you know pursue any other treatment the third doctor we saw however he knew all the latest studies he's treated both cases surgical and non-surgical and um you know he was successful with both and the important part to us was that he was aware of the latest findings and he knew how to treat either case and he was willing to have a conversation about it and we felt really comfortable with him because of that. So we chose to go with him and uh, he started my protocol from the day we saw each other, which was a week after my rupture. So even though, uh, you know, I ruptured on day one, my protocol starts on day seven. So there's like a one week of a gap. However, during this whole time, my foot was placed in the correct position with toes pointing down, which, you know, it does not delay my treatment at all since this is the proper position for non-operative treatment regardless. So after seeing the last doctor, we definitely made the decision to go non-operatively. This doctor actually did an ultrasound of me and verified that my uh, tendon ends are, you know, uh, looking good, that they're together and, you know, they're, he gave me a go ahead for non-operative treatment. So one thing that I would tell everyone in week one, do your research. Uh, Achilles tendon, um, you know, community, medical community does not have unified view on the treatment plan. Depending on the country you're in, depending uh, the doctor you're seeing, you basically might be given completely different treatment, co completely different protocol. But I think what's important is to actually do your research and ask the doctor as many questions as possible before you make your decision. There is nothing wrong with, you know, with going with surgery or going with non-surgery as long as that treatment is right for you and you're comfortable with it. You should be basically informed when you speak to the doctor and the doctor should be willing to speak to you and you should be feeling comfortable with the doctor. So that was my takeaway from week one other than, you know, take a lot of rest. I'm a very active person and sitting does not come easily to me. So... My body, however, was giving me signals. I was tired doing anything, really, during that first week. So I knew I needed to rest. My body's recovering from, you know, from that shock of injury. So I was basically sitting as much as possible with my leg elevated, icing it as much as possible, drinking a lot of water, and just giving my body a rest. I used that time to basically do research, as much research as possible, and just resting as much as possible. During that first week also, if you have never used crutches, that is going to be your introduction to them. Uh, I'm going to have a separate video just to show you the equipment I use and that helped me tremendously. Crutches are one of them and I'll have some tips on, you know, how to help, uh, you know, what to get for them. But yeah, get used to using crutches and uh, having a lot of rest. So anyways, if you are in week one, 
you know, just hang in there. I'm slightly later than week one. I'm just trying to catch up with the videos. It does get easier. You know, you get used to things, you know, uh, pretty quickly. But in week one, if anything that I could, you know, get away from it is rest, elevate, ice, and, you know, do as much research as possible and be just basically truthful to yourself, you know, by, you know, being as informed as possible. So that's it. Hope you healing well and just you know send me any questions that you might have you know about the you know the, the early early days I'll try to respond to it but happy healing <laughs> bye